Hello and welcome to Group By. My name's Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. In this short video, we're gonna see how we can use the Group By function to basically create a pivot style report using a single formula. Historically, when we've wanted to create a report based on this table data, we could use a pivot table report. And it would basically give us one row for every account and then the sum of the amount. Now we have another option. It's the Group By function, equals Group By. Now the first argument is row fields. So we wanna group by the account column, comma. The second argument is the values column. That's our amount column. Comma. The third argument is what type of math we want to apply. Here, we're going to go with the sum function. Close function and enter. <laughs> right? I know. This is like a little pivot table report that we created with a single function. And what's really cool is it's dynamic. And that means if there's new accounts or new data, we don't have to click refresh. It's just going to flow into this report. For example, what if we had a new account called internet? We hit enter, and as you can see, this report is totally dynamic. And now that we're warmed up, it's time to go to the next exercise. Exercise two. The group by function supports multiple row field columns. So check this out. Equals group by. For this row fields argument, we can actually pass it multiple columns. And the values argument is still gonna be our amount column, and we wanna aggregate by the sum function. Close function and enter. <laughs> and now we've got it. Now. What if we wanted to specifically pick and choose columns, even if they're not adjacent or if they're in a different column order? No worries. Instead of selecting them directly, we can use the choose calls function. And we can say from this entire table, comma, I want the third and second column in that order. And that's how we can pick and choose individual columns from the entire table, enter. And now we can see the first column is the account name and the second column is the account number. And that's how we can nest the choose calls function as the first argument to pick and choose specific columns. And there's several additional arguments that help us really customize our report. Let's check those out in the next exercise. Exercise three equals group by. So we want to group it by account comma. We want to sum the amount column. We're going to use the sum function. And now we have several additional choices here. For field headers, we have several options. We're gonna go with no, uh, depending on what you're working on, explore those. We can change the total depth. Do we want totals, yes or no? Do we want grand totals, subtotals? Do we want the grand totals at the top, at the bottom? So depending on what you're working on, feel free to check those out. We can also control the sort order. That's by column, column one, column two. If we have a negative number, it sorts descending. So depending on what you're working on, check that out. And we can also do a filter array. So we could say, for example, only include those rows where the account num is greater than 5050. Zero, zero. Close function, enter. So we have many additional options. I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of this stuff and close function and enter. And let's take a look at a couple of additional aggregate functions. So we have the aggregate functions we would expect like average, min, max, count, but we also have some new options. So check this out. We can say percent of close function and enter. And now we can see these as a percentage of the total. And I could update the cell formatting if I wanted to, no worries. I can also say array to text, close function and enter. And what that does is that provides a list of all of the values. And if I want to remove that total row, we already talked about that. No totals, close function and enter. So I have many additional options for that. Now let's go back to sum and enter. And what if I wanted to get a cell border above the total line, even if the number of rows change? Well, for that, I could simply select these columns, go to conditional formatting, new rule, use formula. Now I can say equals. Okay, so I need to look at G1 because that's the active cell. Does that equal the word total? If so, I want a format, I want a border, I want a top border, click OK, OK, and we got it. So if we have a new account like internet and we hit enter, the report is fully dynamic. The function retrieves this new account and conditional formatting updates the cell border as desired. Hopefully this short video was a good intro to the group by function. Now, depending on what you're working on, you're gonna wanna get in and play around with all the arguments. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user, if you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. 
This video is a production of Excel University. 